Hey, what is going on guys? I'm Tiger with Tiger Upcom Video back with another Dokkan battle video. So as you guys might have heard, the next Extreme Z Awakening coming to global is going to be for the Fizz Goku Black. And in today's video, I want to give you guys a quick breakdown or preview of the Extreme Z battle event itself so you guys know what to expect. And also take a look at the post Extreme Z Awakening details for the Fizz Goku Black. So that you guys are fully prepared and ready to go once this thing officially drops. Now, this EZA is going to be different from any other EZA we've ever received up to this point, mainly because this is the first unit getting an Extreme Z Awakening that is actually different on Global compared to JP, and different in a good way, where he's actually better on Global than he was on JP before Extreme Z Awakening. So uh, that probably will make a pretty big difference, and we'll get to that in a second. But first, let's take a look at the Extreme Z Battle event. And as far as the release date goes, it came out on May 9th, 2019 for JP. But for Global, I don't think there's an exact release date yet that we know about. But I'll say it's most likely coming in about a week and a half, maybe two weeks at the most. So end of november most likely possibly beginning of december but pretty soon and once we get an official date i'll let you guys know in uh, maybe a pinned comment down below or possibly on twitter or something like that and the weakness for this event is the goku's family category so obviously bring as many goku's family units as you possibly can ideally more uh, str type since he is going to be a fizz type boss so the rest of this is pretty standard as you can see we get one dragon stone for every stage up until level 30 so a total of 30 dragon stones for clearing the entire event we're also getting the medals to extreme z awaken the goku black as we go starting with uh, bronze medals then silver then gold and then finally the rainbow medals also getting physical orbs along the way also getting physical kais every once in a while and as far as uh, the damage reduction, like additional damage reduction he gets, he gets 50% damage reduction against int types starting from level 4. I mean, that makes sense because obviously he is a fizz type, so ideally, don't bring too many int types on your team. And then beyond level 7, he gets 60% damage reduction against tech types and int types. And then after level 10, after level 9 actually, SSR or lower units can only cause 2 million damage or less. And this essentially was implemented to prevent people from using Devilman to nuke the later events or later stages. So uh, there you go. And then after level 12, he gets 70% damage reduction against tech, int, and fizz types. And uh, finally, after level 19, he gets 80% damage reduction against AGL, Tech, Int, Fizz, and Extreme types. So the most effective um, types of units to bring against them are definitely STR types, specifically Super STR types, and uh, specifically Goku's family Super STR types. Alright, that is the best thing to bring. So if you guys have a good amount of those, then put them all on one team, and you should be good to go at least until level 30. And then uh, everything else is pretty standard for Extreme Z battles. After level 31, you can get a Hercule statue for every clear up until basically 999. And uh, these can be sold for 1.5 million zenny, so a really great way to farm zenny as always. And uh, in total, we can expect all the Extreme Z battle medals or all the Awakening medals we need to fully Extreme Z awaken the Fizz Goku Black. We can get enough Fizz Orbs to essentially rainbow a physical type unit, maybe Goku Black if you haven't invested any into, into him yet, or uh, maybe another unit that you were saving for. Uh, yeah, a lot of orbs, 30 stones, and a total of 11 Fizz Kais. There are going to be three more missions for a total of four more stones, so collectively you can expect 34 total stones for doing this event. And uh, once again, the weakness is Goku's family, so bring super STR Goku's family units, and you'll be good to go. And now let's move on to the more interesting part of this video, which is the Extreme Z Awakening details themselves. So as I said before, and also mentioned in a previous video, uh, this guy's actually different on Global compared to JP, and the main difference is that on Global, he has Extreme Class E plus 3, and that's something that's missing on JP. As you can see, on JP, he only has the Attack plus 3000 for every Key Sphere obtained, no support for Extreme Types at all, 
and it's also the stats. The stats differ quite a bit. So on global, his max attack before Extreme Z Awakening is 14,800, and his max HP is 15,950, whereas on JP, his attack maxed out at 13,700, and his HP maxed out at 15,350, so more than a thousand additional attack on global before Extreme Z Awakening, and about, I think, 700 more HP. Uh, 600 or 700 more HP. So, yeah, the main difference that we want to focus on here is not really the HP or defense. I think the defense is actually exactly the same, but it's that additional attack, okay? So, after Extreme Z Awakening, he got up to, uh, let's see, oh, actually, it's down here. So, after Extreme Z Awakening, this guy got up to 16,458 attack at rainbow status, so fully duped out, which is nothing to scoff at. It's quite impressive, right? But Theoretically, if they keep things the same, like they don't take anything away from this Extreme Z Awakening on Global, then Fizz Goku Black after Extreme Z Awakening should have over like 17,500, maybe even upwards of 18,000 attack. And that difference in attack, while it might not seem like a ton, will actually make a huge, huge difference because this guy becomes a nuker, like a good nuker, after Extreme Z Awakening. I'll show you the details right now. So, post Extreme Z Awakening, he becomes a Fizz type leader. Actually, he was a Fizz type leader anyways, but a really good Fizz type leader. Key plus three, HP, attack, and defense plus 120%. So the same as, uh, actually it's it's the Fizz Cooler and um, Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks combined, right? And his super attack is Black Power Ball Extreme, causes immense damage, and greatly lowers attack and defense, which is a debuff of 30% for 3 turns, which is very good. And his passive is now attack and defense plus 15% per key sphere obtained, key plus 1 up to 5 with each attack received, randomly changes key spheres of a certain type to rainbow key spheres, and additional attack and defense plus 5% per key sphere obtained when there is a Goku's family category enemy. So when facing Goku's family, this guy gets an attack and defense buff of 20% per key sphere obtained, which is a huge, huge boost over his attack plus 3000 for every key sphere obtained. But you might have noticed that he actually still does not have any support for extreme types, right? So there are two things that are possible here. Number one is that when this guy gets an Extreme Z Awakening on Global, they give him this exact passive and uh, he will essentially lose that extreme support part, which would kind of suck. And uh, of course, they could also just give him less attack and HP once he gets fully Extreme Z Awakened so that his stats will be the exact same as uh, they are on JP post Extreme Z Awakening. So essentially, that would be reversing the buff that he got when he first got released on Global, right? But honestly, guys, I don't see that happening because the whole point of Extreme Z Awakenings is to you know, make units stronger, right? To add things to units as opposed to take things away. And I mean, there's there was a reason in the past why they, you know, buffed the Goku Black, right? And I just don't, I don't know, I just don't see them reversing what they did in the past, right? So what I'm thinking, and I could be totally, totally wrong about this one, and you guys might totally disagree with my reasoning, but uh, that's okay. But I do think, I do think that He's going to keep the extreme um, support passive. I think he's going to keep the additional attack and HP uh, stats that he got on global. And he's just going to be overall better, better on global than he is on JP post Extreme Z Awakening as well. So uh, as far as the passive goes, you know, everything stays the same. Super attack stays the same. The leader skill obviously stays the same, but he will also give extreme uh, allies key plus three and even though it's not, you know, like the best support passive, it does make a difference, especially for LRs, for getting that 18 key super off, right? And uh, of course, there are a lot of units that, uh, like a lot of extreme units actually that have like key issues too. So having him on the team will obviously help with those issues. As far as his stats go, post Extreme Z Awakening at Rainbow Status, he should have over 19,000 HP. He should have somewhere around 17,500, maybe even 18,000 attack and defense will be the exact same, I'm guessing, because uh, it was actually the exact same before Extreme Z Awakening 2, so nothing changes there, but 
Um, that additional 1000 to 1500 attack guys, it's gonna make him hit so much harder or I don't know about so much, but like quite a bit harder on global versus JP, right? If that's the case, like I said, they could just make it the exact same as JP, but I don't see that happening. I see him getting that additional uh, attack and HP buff. And, uh, you know, like I said, it's going to make a big difference. This guy's already hitting really, really hard now on JP, like easily getting uh, 2 million plus attack, um, depending on how many orbs you give him, right? If you give him like 10 plus orbs, he can get up to like 3 million, something like that. So um, he's already a monster on JP with these stats, right? So giving him an additional, you know, 1,000, 1,500 attack uh, might make him hit like 3.54 million attacks, something like that. I don't know the exact calculations. I haven't done them. Uh, I'm just basing it off the fact that he's already a monster on JP. Give him that much more attack will make all the difference, guys. He's going to be insane on global if they keep that basically better on global status that he has right now, right? And uh, of course, like I said, the additional key will be amazing too. It's going to be, uh, it's just going to make him that much more useful, right? Because he also will support on top of getting his own for attack and defense and being self-sufficient for key and being a orb changer and all that stuff. So um, as good as he is on JP now with the EZA, with his EZA on global, he might just become insane. And I look forward to that for sure. I'm very excited for that. Um, I really hope that Bandai doesn't take that away from us. I mean, they could, like I said, they could. I just wanna be clear, I don't know what they're gonna do. But uh, I really hope they don't. I really, really hope that he's just ridiculously powerful on global. And obviously, I would be totally okay with that. So we'll see what happens, guys. But those are all the details for the Phase Goku Black Extreme Z Awakening that's coming to global for part two of the thank you celebration. Hope you guys are excited. Um, maybe you learned something from this video. That would be ideal. And as always, if you guys liked today's video, then make sure to like the damn video and if it's your first time watching me first time to the channel and you'll like what you see then definitely hit that big red subscribe button to join the tiger squad now and while you're at it hit that notification bell too so that youtube knows you want to stay up to date with all my latest content and that's it i'm out of here until next time i hope you guys have a fantastic fantastic day i'm tiger with tiger uppercut media signing out